Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Cassell. So I wanted to walk you through how your one pager works. Some of you will have made a one pager in another class before. This is actually a really powerful study tool. It sounds a little dorky. It sounds a little overboard when you go through everything on the checklist. But what a one pager does is force you to really engage with what you know with what notes you've taken, what resources you have, and create an artifact that truly is yours, that sums up your learning. By going through that process, it's a powerful way to study. So I'll read the directions here. This is on paper in the classroom, by the way. A one-pager is a creative response to your learning experience. It allows you to respond imaginatively while being brief and concise in making connections between words and images. We think about what we see and read differently when we are asked to do something with what we have seen or read. We learn best when we create our own ideas. Your personal thinking about what you have experienced should be understood by the audience that views the one pager. In this case, the one pager is going to be you. Um, we'll do a little um, like one minute share out at the start of Friday, but we really won't have a lot of time. So here's what goes on your one pager. So you'll notice there's a huge checklist except compared to the amount of knowledge you've learned this checklist is not that big it says use unlined white paper like the back of the one that you have in the classroom title the one pager appropriately to reflect the content use color fill the entire page i mean no white space right be purposeful about the arrangement of your one pager for example have a reason for using a certain color or placing an object in a certain place. Write two quotations for readings or activities. If you think about it, like we don't necessarily have quotations or readings or activities, but we've got labs and notes that have good essential questions. We've got phrases or statements or rules that we use out loud over and over again that help trigger understanding or memory. So there might be some phrases like that. Use three visual images, either drawn or cut from magazines. Draw them, doodle them. That's what I would do. Some of you are like, no, sweet. I've got a stack of National Geographic and a pair of scissors that, you know, are going to do some work here. But create a visual focus for your page. If you use a computer image, personalize it to make it your own. If you're printing out a bunch of memes, make them actually work for you. Place five essential vocabulary words, phrases around the image. Use these terms, words, and something invisible, who or phrases. They should express the main ideas, your impressions, feelings, or thoughts about what you've seen or read. So if you think about for us, five essential vocabulary words, this is going to be variables. This is going to be equations. This is going to be big picture ideas. So if you draw some diagrams of some of the problem solving things you know how to do now, there might be some keywords that go along with them, some definitions of terms, some equations that help you analyze that situation. Some of the main idea for this whole unit. What are we learning about? Write two costas level two or three questions and answer them. Uh, obviously, this link will work on Canvas. It won't work on your piece of paper. Put a symbolic colored border around the edges of the page. And write your name on the back, which this now has become the back of your paper. If you do this, if you go through this process, what you've made for yourself is basically the ultimate notepad or note card, right? You've created a tool that's forced you to think through everything you know and to sum it up creatively and meaningfully on a single sheet of paper. It's a great way to consolidate what you know, to find the gaps, to find the things that you don't know so you can prioritize what to study, right? Good luck, and I look forward. Oh, I forgot. The final thing about this, you'll notice that there's another assignment posted after this that says midterm exam selfie extra credit or something like that. So we used to do this all the time, way back about pre-pandemic. Every time we did a big exam, we made a review poster or a one pager like this. And then what happened afterwards was I wanted you to take a selfie with your one pager that you made. Now that seems silly right now, but here's what happens. When we take our next exam, which will be at the semester, I'll ask you to take a, a 
and we might make another one pager in between. We'll cover a couple more units before the end of the semester, honestly. But at the end of each of our units, whether we have an exam or not, you'll make a one pager. But when we get to our next exam, I'm going to offer you an extra credit opportunity again, which is to take a selfie with your one pager, except I want to see your previous one pagers also. So you have this building wall of science that you're creating because in order to show all these, you're going to have to be able to lay them out, tack them up on the wall, that sort of thing. All right. So you'll see a posting for extra credit. My <gasps> oh, bad. It's very late at night. And then you'll be able to take a selfie with your one pager in it. And then I'll give you some extra credit for doing that. So thanks, everybody. Good luck. Please reach out with questions. I'm here for you.